Well, today's actually the first time I'm ever going to do a video, so let's see how this goes. Today's video, well, this this, this video has been inspired by Dave at MS Paints, showing me how to do something with foam plates. So I'll give it a go myself, and well, I've been recording it, let's see how it goes, shall we? Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is to actually try and mark out the place where we need to cut out from the plates. So you measure across, and then my case has got nine inch plate. So four and a half inches straight across the middle, put a dot in the middle. From there, draw lines out each side using a nice right angle. Three, two. One, two, three block. Very nice right angle, very nice straight edges. And that, we can mark out the edging. And then, cut out and pop the end up with a nice square. Easy for a template to then draw onto and draw around on it. Any others. Hey. So using our template on each one that we cut out from the first one, we go through every plate then that we're gonna use however many you need, however many you're cutting out. Template back in the middle. Simple scroll around with a pencil. You end up with another nice template. If you get it in the right place, I'm like, I think I'll overlap to calm a bit there. And you continue doing that until you once you've got your tiles that you initially want, in my case I'm only going to start with four quite easy ones. You then want to get yourself a mechanical pencil or other pointed device. And you can use two picks, uh, kebab skewers, anything with a point on really. And it's then that you can either lay them out next to each other so that all the stones line up and you can across both of them. So a small example here we'll put a, a cobblestone. That's actually gonna meet up with those two. So when these two actually join up that cobblestone will match up with it. We'll put one right at the edge as well just to roughen up that edge so it's not perfectly neat when they come and meet each other so it's not an exact match and all the cobbles are going to be half and half and we want a bit of variance within them so that's essentially how you go about it we're going to go over all these with essentially a small tool and etching all the edges of the cobblestones and where we want stones to be don't think you have to be uniform with it don't think you have to do it too much just as an example, here's what I've done in the past. Very few of the actual stones will be the similar sizing. Some of them even have cracks in them. So you can vary it up. And put the cracks and stuff wherever you want. So I'm going to get... So, we're going to start with the this one. As we've already got the line that lines up with the other... The other tile. I also can remember the words for these things. So, as we etch in... You can put larger ones in. Because we're using old rough style methods and some of the abilities to cut stone or just use stone that was found. Using larger ones, just making sure you round off the edges where they meet. Now it will leave a little bit of an indentation. That's when we paint over it, it'll stay black in the recesses. So from then you just etch out where the stones seem to want to go. Now as you go in you'll notice that the small little things are right so that one needs to have a small little stone in there to be able to curve off and come round for the next stone. So a lot of it will form itself as you're going through. Just paying attention to where each stone would go. Some places will have small stones, some places will have large stones. A lot of the time you'll find that you, you put in medium-ish sized stones in light. Bring up to light the camera a bit easier. Like this size. You'll find you're doing a lot more 
your stones will on average end up that size but you will end up with some small put some large in there it adds the variance in so that not all of them are the same it's not too uniform over the over and around everything I think an odd, slightly angled stone in. It's not everyone would have gone in perfect. They don't all go in perfect, nice little rows. Hey. It's like stone wall, like dry wall. You fit what you can fit in where you can fit it, and you get the try and fit the right one where it needs to go. In this case, you just try to pull out the right stones and carve in as your texture along to make it look right essentially. But it's slowly getting there. We'll get this one done. And then we shall see how it matches up with the other one. I've already I quickly did the other one off camera. But this one I will do on camera so we can see it fully. Right. It does take a bit of time I will admit. Which still amazes me and my partner to this day that I can sit here and do this. And I, hold, I can actually hold my attention for long enough. You said you can put large blocks in where you feel necessary. I just feel like, no, oh, that, that one should be a bit bigger there. No, put it a bit bigger there then. This is an entirely Bob Ross style of etching and carving. No such thing as a mistake, just happy accidents. So I'll put a few small ones in around there now, so I'm going to try and make sure I put a bigger one in. And then a couple of smaller ones, just to try and even it out a little bit. Not all surrounded by large stones. The occasional actual square one can go in as well. Round ones, triangle ones. Ones that technically don't have a shape. Just filling it in as you're going across. not to go too deep because these are foam plates they're not very thick so if you press too hard you will go straight through the back of it and that's not good the paints getting through it's gonna make a messy desk working from one side to the other because just in case like here nice little spot here for a, a larger block much larger than I've done on the others but it's at a nice nice big angle it was a square it's now cracked a corner off and you see we can end up with a larger piece with quite large cracks coming off it there but they're quite a smooth area still and then from there we can fill out the rest of this corner and then fill out the rest of that corner so 
a lot of it you'll just you'll just see and go oh, no that's a nice place for that type of thing so I can put a nice one so that I can just cut the entire corner into one block rub it off a bit and it's a single cobble within that section I can then put a small one a slightly longer one another big one a little one and just work my way through it etching in what I feel anyway is where the stones would naturally go if I was building this road and I had this shaped stones this is what I would have put them in when you get to the corners it's if you just try and round them out a little bit so they look like they've got some edging on them rather than oops sorry Mr. Inferno so they've got some edging on them so it's not a complete flat edge so there will be some small divots as you can see on this side they do come through slightly which gives it a little bit more edge on the side there stops it being as plain and simple round stone in there so I don't know round one a long one I've not done a long stone yet there we go, I've got a long one there a couple of little small ones in that section on there, let's start moving up now from within here The, any, any sharp edges that you don't think would look right on the stone and again they can all, always be gaps, divots, potholes within the road because we're not laying a time on the road this is medieval <laughs> make and make do Okay, so that's that's the tile done. As a base etching, let's see how it pairs up to the other one. If I can't remember how it's supposed to pair up, I believe it's those two stones down there, and then that's how they look together. Oh, we've still got to go over this with tin file to give it a nice edging it's just to remove that flat surface off it oh, we should come back to that in a moment ok so now we've got the tin file we just, just lightly rub it over you don't want it too smooth the tin file so you don't want it too tight you don't want it too compact you want some nice sharp Novelly edges, so when you run it over, you leave some indentations and stops it being. See, that's already looking a lot different when you compare the two. This one with tin file over it, and this is the one that's still fresh. There's a big, big difference there. It's even accentuated and added some more detail into the cracks that I scarred in myself so it's even putting more detail onto the detail that I've already done can't, can't argue with that can you? extra detail for the next thing no, we don't want it too compact which the problem is this is getting a bit compact now with all that rolling that's still pick up a little bit give it a fresh scrunch round just to give it new edges and give it a roll over double check you've got everywhere that you need Presto. Just 
two tiles ready to be mud punched and painted. Okay, now for the next step, now we've got round nice and black, we need to stop it being as matte black. So, a dry brush of a bone, a grey, or an off white essentially, just to just to try and bring out some of the edges that we carved in earlier after we went over them with tinfoil which I did, do believe I missed that point and to actually show you that part but we use a crumpled up tinfoil to help get texture on these and as you can see there's some small divots in there we use a small amount of tinfoil just to get that on there a simple dry brush over it so we can pick out the edges and then from there we can so a simple dry brush to pick out the edges and then from there we can start so a quick dry brush over the edges and then we can pick out the individual stones later on with different off colours and try and make it a little more real estate shall we say so we're going to pick a few a few colors out mostly browns greens partly bone in this case just for a little bit of variance shall we say so yeah arg skin as a green we will be mixing these with ivory i can't speak at the moment but at least i can put paints in a pan out so I'll be alright out I hope so a bit of hardened leather some arc skin and some pallid bolt and then we'll start putting bits of these randomly about on the actual top tile not towel what am I talking about I don't know I don't want it anymore so we should get these with a brush and I'll see it somewhere so we will get these on there we go let's see so we'll start with the brown and randomly you just put a few colours in you know just try not to put them next to, to each other and space them out
Now that seems a little bit too orangey to me, so we will go back over it with the ivory. We will put another small pile of pally bone stone in just to I'm breaking up right. No, we're gonna put a bit of pally bone in with green, green as well. Or should I say green with the pallet bone. Just to again give us a slightly different colour. So when it goes over the standard art green will not look the same as the other green. It also gives it a more of a mo mossy look. Adding those brown tones I'm saying. So you can add it into the, uh, the little cracks. See how I've done that? So it just looks like something's growing. Now that's the main thing we'll, we'll use the green for. But the browns will be going on the stones as well. So we put a few more green mossy pieces in, but there's no brown on this one yet. Now we've gone back to the the brown one, and as I said, we're gonna get a bit, a bit of an ivory dry brush, just as a tonal color that kind of brings it all back back together. Hopefully, he's gonna work as well as I hope. We'll find out. Not the best dry brush, but it'll do. And you see as it just brings it all into one, one kind of, well, as I said, tongue. It stops the browns from popping out as much and in a cartoon effect. I don't know what's wrong with my ability to speak. But it does work. See, just try the two next to each other. And there are all the methods that you can do with it. So we'll just 
carry on with it. Dry brush. Oh, it seems like a bit of a heavy dry brush at the minute. At the minute. Not done at all on, on camera. It would have took ages, ages. So those are the four initial initial tiles. As you can see, there is enough difference between each one, so you can vary them around and make corridors, full rooms, angles. Well, you can arrange it how you want. You want. But once it's done from there, then we're all right. So now you've got the anger bit. We can, bit of magic, and now we can rearrange them any way we want. So you can put them into a long street, bit of a corner in there. Let's get lined up a bit. Then if you've built any houses, then they can fit in the corners, you can go around them. Now, if you are getting a bit adventurous, you could try something like this. Now I'm from Manchester, so I love my red brick. So I thought I'd do a little bit of red brick street. Now, same techniques. So I've used the green that's had a bit of brown in it to have the moss in the middle of the cracks. Bit of red, bit of orange, bit of brown. And then we get the color for the bricks same techniques for over the top so dry brushing afterwards and it'll come in or the tone it in really so depending how adventurous you feel you can try different things it is all the same technique but and i will show you now i have put a curb on this so if you really wanted to you can put them up against each other have one as a street have one as a road and build from there it's all up to you now. Take all this and go be creative. Thank you very much and uh, leave comments. See you later.